Welcome back to video number two in this series. Now, if you haven't watched video one, I would suggest you go back and watch it because we're troubleshooting here in Costa Rica and the things we found out while working on the ceiling fan are gonna help us immensely with the rest of the issues around here. So we're working on a GFCI receptacle in the bathroom. Now, it wouldn't reset. So when I got here, sure enough, it would not reset. As soon as you hit the reset button, it just flashed. Nothing tripped, you couldn't hear anything audible from it, just little light flash, the indicator light flashed on and off and went back to the red tripped position. So I pulled it out of the box, as you can see here, and now it will reset. So what we gotta do is find out how it's wired, how the hot neutrals are, how they may or may not be reversed, and we'll have to see if the line and load connections are done properly. So let's get at it. All right, so here you see my connections on this GFCI receptacle. Now. What you're looking at here is the neutral side of the receptacle. And to your surprise, you'll notice that they are the black conductors, which as I mentioned in video one, are actually the neutrals. So there's your splices made. Can you see there that we have some strands sticking out of the splice? Now what I couldn't figure out why, when I first uh, tried to test it and it would not reset, could not figure out why when I pulled it out of the box, it does now test and reset as it should. Well, here it is. When you push this receptacle back into the box, I'm gonna to try to zoom in as tight as I can to see the strand, strand of wire that's loose there on the hot, well, not the hot, it's actually the neutral connection. There's one strand that escaped the connection there. And there's the ground connections in the back you can see a strand of the ground sticking out. So A connected to B, have a neutral touching the ground and your GFI is not gonna work. And that's what I suspect was happening while well, I'm almost positive now, having seen this, that that little loop, that one strand was touching that chunk of copper that you see sticking out of the moret when you shoved it back in the box and that will cause your GFCI not to reset. And that is uh, discounting the fact here again that all the hots in this house are white and all the blacks and greens are neutrals and grounds. So let's fix up these connections, get rid of those stray strands, and that should alleviate this problem. All right, so I uh, fixed up those connections, got the strands all back together and put back in the hole under the terminal as they should be, used a little larger moret had to trim off those ground wires so that it would tighten down nicely on top of the conductors with no stray strands sticking out. Nice how they left about, oh, say one and a half to two inches of wire here to make your device connections, but that's another besides the point. And so let's put this back in the box and turn the power back on. Okay, so I got the power turned back on. Now what's left is to hit the test and reset buttons. Okay, well that what you saw right there was actually do-it-yourself educational golden footage right there where I hit the test button and poof, sparks flew out of the box and the breaker did not trip. So that's part B. Here's part A. That must be EMT conduit, metallic tubing that they run to plastic boxes inside the concrete and cinder block walls here. So when I put that receptacle back in, that's the load side of the receptacle and it actually, with the white wires on it again, remember, are the hot connections. So that hot terminal, when I screwed it in there, it touched the EMT coming into the box and pop, dead short circuit. So now we got to figure out if we can insulate that EMT or adjust the device so that it's a little higher up and not going to touch that EMT, but it's awfully close. I don't think we're going to be able to do anything except try to adjust that device in there and insulate the metal on that conduit entering the box. That brings us to part A. Why would that breaker have sparked but not tripped? Well, part of the reason is, interestingly enough, on 12 gauge wire, which should be a 20 amp single pole breaker, Lo and behold, we have a 40 amp breaker feeding this circuit. So we can provide a lot of sparks within 40 amps, almost, well, it is double the size of the breaker that's 
allowed on a 12 gauge circuit. So, interesting, we'll have to try to fix this up and I'll let you know what I do. All right, so complicated by the fact that we only have two inches of cable out of sticking out of cable pairs or wire pairs sticking out of each of these conduits. What I did is I trimmed away a little bit of the conduit connector that's sticking into the box. Carefully trimmed that away with my side cutters. Made sure the edges were smooth. Then I stuffed in a triple layer of electrical tape just as an insulator inside that conduit connector. And then I've wrapped my terminal connections, terminations on this receptacle with about three or four layers of tape as well. So I'm gonna remount this device, try to keep it as high as I can on those oval or oblong slots in the device so that it's as high as it can be away from those connections and then we'll try again. Okay, back in the box, cover plate on, breaker turned back on, still the 40 amp at this time, we'll have to change that down to a 20. Test and reset, all good. Just one thing left to do now is do all the proper tests of a receptacle. I don't have a plug tester with me, so we'll do it the old fashioned way with the meter. And we want to check first, hot to neutral. Hundred eighteen volts, both sides, hot to ground. Not getting a good ground connection here. Okay, found another problem. So as you saw, I checked hot to neutral, 118 volts, and I struggled mightily to find a hot to ground reading on my meter. I have none. So that tells me that that ground wire inside these conduits isn't connected to anything. There was a ground in, a ground wire out going out one conduit, in one and out the other along with the pair of conductors yet there is no continuity to ground on that ground wire so that could be anywhere could have been forgotten in one of the junction boxes somewhere inside of a concrete wall or a cinder block wall here again lever a or lever b we got to leave it b because we cannot trace conduits in here find out where that problem is the good news it is a ground fault circuit interrupter. So that's the one of the fixes way to go around when you do not have houses with the ground wires in them. And that is to install GFCI receptacles because what that does is it'll protect you from a shock because if it detects any current leakage going to ground that isn't on the hot and neutral as it should be, then it'll trip. So we have no ground in this one, but we do have a GFCI protected outlet. So you're protected other than the hot wires are white, the ground wires and neutral wires are black, I should say. The ground wire is green, but not connected to ground. <laughs> and it's all run on a 40 amp circuit on 12 gauge wire. So <laughs> some things we can fix, some things we'll leave or be. So what's the takeaway from the second video? Well, as you saw, not every fix is a simple fix. So sometimes when you think you've got it all figured out, you just encounter another issue. In the final third video of this series, I take on a bathroom ceiling fan that has me a little confused. And also we find some interesting wiring on that one. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Make some comments below and let's move on to that third video.